Welcome to this lecture, we will discuss the difference between a population and a sample. In most statistical analyses, we will use sample data from a population in order to draw conclusions about the population. A population can be seen as all things that are of interest in our study, whereas a sample is a subset of those things. For example, let's say that we would like to know the proportion of smokers in Europe then the population would represent all people living in Europe. Since there are approximately 750 million people living in Europe, it would be impossible to ask all the people in Europe if they smoke or not. Therefore, we need to take a sample. For example, we can collect 10,000 individuals and check the proportion of smokers in this sample. Let's say that we find that 25% of the 10,000 people in our sample are smokers. Then we can use this number as an estimate of the proportion of smokers in Europe. Now, let's say that we instead want to know the proportion of smokers in Germany. Our population is then all the people living in Germany and our sample could consist of, for example, 5,000 individuals from the German population. If instead like to know the proportion of only young people in Germany who smoke, then our population would only include the young people living in Germany. Our sample could, for example, then include 1000 young individuals from Germany. Let's say that we would like to know the proportion of smokers of students at a certain university. Then the population would consist of all students at that university. If the university has only about 1,000 students, the population is now so small that we can actually ask all the students if they smoke or not. Thus, if the population is sufficiently small, then we do not need to take a sample. If we check the proportion of smokers in this small population, the proportion is no longer an estimate because we have used the whole population. Here are some important notations that are used in statistics, which tell if we refer to a sample or a population. Note that population parameters are denoted by Greek letters. X bar represents the mean of a sample, whereas mu represents the mean of a population. P represents the proportion in a sample, whereas pi represents the proportion in a population. The standard deviation of a sample is usually denoted by SD or S and by the Greek letter sigma for population. Since the variance is the square of the standard deviation, one usually denotes the variance by S squared or sigma squared. Note that the sample statistics are estimators of the population parameters. Let's go back to our example of the proportion of smokers in Europe. If we knew that the proportion of smokers in Europe was 20%, we could denote this as pi is equal to 20%. However, the population parameters are usually not known because the population is too large or too complex to measure. This is why we need to take a sample. If we find that 25% of our sample includes smokers, then we could denote that as p is equal to 25%. Note that our estimated proportion of smokers from the sample is 25%, whereas the true proportion in the population is 20%. When we take a sample, we'll never know how close our estimated value is to the true population value, because we usually have no idea about the value of the population parameter. Therefore, we do not know this value. Instead, we have to rely on our estimated value for the population. This is why we use different statistical tests to show the uncertainty of our estimated parameters. Here are three basic things that you need to consider when you collect your sample. The sampling should be random. The size of the sample should be large enough and the sample should be representative. Note that there are a lot more things that you need to consider, which depends on your experimental design. 
For our previous example, random means that every person living in Europe has the same chance to be included in our sample. Our sample needs to be large enough in order to make a good prediction of the proportion of smokers in Europe. Let's say that we only included two individuals in our sample. Then, just by chance, we could end up with 100%, 0% or 50% smokers. Note that little n is the standard notation for the sample size in statistics. For example, if n is equal to 1000, we know that the sample size used to estimate the population parameter was 1000. If our sample size is big, then we will make a better prediction of the population parameter. In other words, the bigger the sample size we have, the closer we expect that the estimate is to the true population parameter value. Our sample should also be representative, since we know that the proportion of smokers differs between different countries in Europe. It is important that our sample reflects the European population. If we would collect random people only from half of the countries in Europe, then our sample would not represent the whole population. Therefore, we need to make sure that the sample includes people from all countries so that our sample is a good representation of the European population. This was the end of this video about the difference between a sample and a population. Thanks for watching.